Julie. Honey. Why do I get the feeling that when you said you wanted to meet us for lunch, that was a little fib? It wasn't a fib. Oh, good. Because Mama hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it was a straight up lie. <laughs> okay. So, number one. What are we doing here? And number two, why are there people lined up outside the door? And three. What's with the pib squeak? Okay, you ready? Yes. yes. Nakia, Kathleen, pay attention. The Bug Wars by Robert Asprin. What's better than being found dead with a Terry Pratchett novel still open in your hands? Um, not dying? I'll tell you what, writing the best science fiction novel ever. We've got a warlike lizard race. He should have totally sued ABC for the V miniseries, by the way. Who was at war with three different races of huge bugs. The wasps, the leapers, and the ants. If that isn't enough, the hero Ram has to try to contend with one of his soldiers trying to stab him in the back every step of the way. Kiyo! He had to handle that in a one-on-one -on -one duel. I'm telling you, yo, this is the most awesomest sci-fi book out there for any young reader. Uh, Ethan is 20. I bet he remembers it fondly. He was young once. 20 is still young. So your point is simultaneously that I was wrong to describe Ethan's demographic as young, while at the same time, 20 is still young? <laughs> I got pwned by a 10-year-old. <laughs> My card. Yes. <laughs> Professional book crusher? Mm-hmm. How's that possible? I mean, Julie just invented book crushing yesterday. I made it when I saw her ad last night. You made an ad? Oh, God. Yeah, I'm auditioning people to summarize books for me before my date with Ethan in six days. Oh, this is like the time you were so obsessed with the recipe for Bush's baked beans, you broke into E.J. Corey's house <laughs> to try and bribe him to help you figure it out. She did that? Yeah. Oh, I don't like your ambition, lady. Thank you, Mike. That'll be all. We'll be in touch. Thanks for the opportunity. There's no we. FYI, it's just <sighs> It's a business speak. You wouldn't understand. Okay. I like him. He is awesome. Oh, yeah. We're high on him. Nah. Uh, I can't be getting pwned in front of my friends by a ten-year-old. <sighs> anyway. Uh -huh. I need you guys to help me audition these couple hundred people. A couple hundred? Oh, honey, we need to talk. Come on, let's go. I'm paying $100 an hour for this room. A hundred an hour? You're out of your mind. Hi, I'm Julie, and when I was 13, I made the mistake of reading a Piers Anthony novel as my first ever book. It was so bad that I'll never read again. Thank God for movies. Well, except for Twilight, of course. Ugh. But now, I've met Ethan, and he loves to read, and can't respect any girl who doesn't. Now, I could do the non-evil thing and just forget about him and move on, but... Damn, can you blame me for cheating? So with five days until our first date, I've invited all of my reading friends over to give me the crash course on all the books in the world, so I can pretend to be Ethan's hot little bookworm. Wish me luck! Hey, Todd. Thanks for hosting. My dorm room is a little too small. Porter! <clears throat> no problem. You know where you're for. You come on in. Have a seat. I like the whole no two chairs match vibe. It's very urban millennial modern. What? Oh, uh, Todd, this is my dorm mate, Kathleen. Charmed. Likewise. And you remember Nakia? Hey. Hey, what's up? What's all this? Oh, well, I'll be taking notes, but with the three of you throwing so many books and synopsis at me over the next few days, it's too much to remember without recording it. So, I'll listen to the recordings at night while I try and sleep and soak it all in. <laughs> Those microphones must have cost, like, thousands of dollars. Oh, nonsense! I also have a wireless mic for each of you to wear, so come on over. I'll put them all on hey, you. She even got this pro recorder right here to capture all the audio. My house looks like a freaking movie set. Uh, <laughs> nice chair. This must have cost you a lot of money. <laughs> Girl, for what you're spending to scam Ethan, you could have bought yourself a cute boy. 
I'm not buying anyone, and I'm not scamming him either. I'm just trying to get him past his stupid book obsession so he can fall in love with the real me. <laughs> the real you. That doesn't read books. Hating is bad for the skin, you know. They did a study and everything. You know, Ethan's just gonna rip your heart out anyway. Thank you, Helen Gurley Brown. Are <laughs> you still pissed off? At don't say his name. Just don't. <laughs> Focus, guys. Less arguing and more talking about books. Todd, say something so I can check your levels. Uh, the V spinoff novel sucked. Okay, yeah. great. All right. Now book me up. Now remember, don't bog me down with all the boring details. I want you guys to crush all the plot essentials down into a couple of minutes or some kind of sound bite so I can use it to make them think that I've read all the books. Okay? Okay. Sweet. Me first. The Catcher in the Rye. And I've taken the liberty of making some visual aids for my presentation. What the... I'm Holden Caulfield. I hate everyone and I think I'm better than them. Just like everyone does at my age. On the school system, let's ban this book because we're scared it may actually encourage kids to think like that. There's no way that they're smart enough to understand that our lead isn't a hero, not even if we explain it to them. I am a bunch of crazy mofos. I'm going to go buy this book and leave it laying around my homestead while I go do an assassination. That'll show them. Begin conspiracy theories. That's very troubling. <clears throat> but true. So I got this. So in Fifty Shades of Grey, there's this weak white woman who uh, lets this rich man walk all over uh, her to secure the bag. Oh my god, I can't listen to you talk about that piece of <laughs> book. <laughs> no, don't worry, I didn't read the book. I just watched the movie. Same difference. No, it is not. Julie could watch the movies if she really wanted to go that route. Yeah, that's true. The movies were very faithful to the novels. Or so I hear. Anyway, no, I couldn't watch the movies. I mean, I tried watching the first one like three times and I fell asleep all three times. Your focus when watching movies is suspect. What a vicious lie. Dumbledore is gonna kick his purple ass! That's not totally old news. She just um, was needed to me. This is Avengers I'm Infinity War. I know, it's the ultimate team that was right? Is that not funny? Yeah. Harry Potter character. Well, if we I were you, I'd be a lot more about, about this in the car on the way death, here. You let a woman kick your ass. Yeah, yeah, right on, right on. In time, everyone on Earth will ever come Luke Skywalker, Skywalker is gonna kick his purple ass. I'm still gonna. So, Anastasia Steel. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Anastasia Steele. <laughs> Anastasia Steele. <laughs> Alright, I'm sorry, okay. Anne Stupid. Can I. Anne Stupid? Can we just. Anne Stupid? I will allow it. Thank you. So. <clears throat> Anne Stupid it has such a low self esteem that she allows this guy to, like, put her in an abusive relationship under the guise that it's like a BDSM thing. Oh, oh, so you got how problematic it is. I shouldn't have doubted you. Oh yeah, people actually in the life hate this book with a passion. But it's like some character arc thing, right? And Stupid finally realizes that it's unhealthy and gets out of it. <laughs> oh, okay, so this is like a cautionary tale, warning the reader to not get involved with this kind of controlling jerk. <laughs> the author has stated in interviews that this is supposed to be a love story. Then why is it so popular with women? That's easy, because people like to be able to read literary porn in public without being called out on it. <laughs> or so I hear. <laughs> okay, so Ethan might be into romance novels, so... Um... No. Hell no. Maybe I should have invited Erica to this. Uh, in college, I had to read Faulkner's Rose for Emily. 
basically. Emily's this like really sheltered lady who doesn't have to pay taxes because of her weird, crazy family. But in the end, she really did love her man to death. Todd, that's not romantic. That's morbid and weird. <laughs> sure, it's romantic. Wouldn't you want a guy to keep on loving you after you were poisoned to death? <laughs> I'm pretty sure the man was the one poisoning her. Yeah, whatever. You're ruining the romance. Anyway. Yeah, she ends up not being able to find anybody that could love her like her dead boyfriend did. And all the townspeople are upset when she dies, but they're like, hey, it's for the best because she's with Loverboy now and they're happy, right? Yeah. Julie, definitely tell Ethan you like this book. It's super romantic. Did you even read A Rose for Emily? Yeah, it's a sweet romantic novel. Hmm, sounds like it to me. Very Titanic. Sounds like you got an F on your assignment. Does anyone want to point out the obvious here? Alright, so I haven't read this, but so far we've got Lady with a Weird Family, No Taxes, Boyfriend Dies of Poisoning, Lady Dies Later, what's to tell? She's the one poisoning him! She's been sleeping with his creepy skeleton for years! It's disgusting and sick! Uh... Yeah, oh no, the Titanic though? Yeah, that's so romantic. Yeah, when there was totally room on that door for her to not murder Jack, but hey, no, not this book, right? Ugh, right? Weirdo. Whatever, hey, let me try again. The Awakening. Sure. Okay, the cops have come up, find the body of a dude named George Reeves. He's the guy that played, yeah, Superman on TV, right? right. Well, this surly detective guy comes in and tries to figure out if he killed himself or somebody murdered that's him. That's Hollywood land, you Idiot, that's not even a book. Where did you pull that from? Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> anyway, let me tell you about Awakening. So it's this woman named Edna Pontillier, and she's tired of all the crap that society makes her do because she's a woman and all. So she's tired of standing in the kitchen, bare feet and pregnant, so she ditches her useless husband and kids and goes out and parties with hot Creole men. Mm, sounds like a very boring, unsports-filled book to me. Well, there was swimming. Oh, cool. What distance? down. That's not a distance. <laughs> <sighs> Moving on. Nakia. Bio of a space tyrant by Pierce Anthony. Uh, no, no, no. Mm -mm. Not he who must not be read. Yes. Ethan might be a fan, so listen up. No, no Kai is worth Pierce Anthony. Mm -mm. Oh. Look at that face. Look at it. All right, now drink it in. Okay, fine. All right, good. So, there's this boy named Hope Hubris. Now he's, he's pretty optimistic about the future. He's kind of got like a bit of a problem with arrogance. Oh, 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 I get it, I get it. What? Because his first name is Hope, and he's optimistic about the future. As Wow. Anyway, he has a sister named Spirit. She's got a zest and like a zeal for life. Oh, 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 I get it, I get he it. He has another sister named Faith. Oh, I get it. And his girlfriend's name is Health. Anyway, so after he murders his girlfriend, he ends up lusting after his sister's spirit. <laughs> don't worry, they don't have sex or anything. Until the sequel! Ah! Oh! Boom! Doom! Boom! Ah! Yeah! Get down! Get down! Get down! Mm. Oh! 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 my god. Okay, moving on. Um, Kathleen. <laughs> okay, well, um, why not talk about Hannibal by Thomas <laughs> Harris? Todd, I'm gonna need you for this one. All right. All right. Where do you want me? <clears throat> okay. All right, so you're Mason Verger, and I'm Hannibal, okay? Gotcha. So I ate your face years ago, and now you really want revenge. So what do you do? Uh, that whole yeah convoluted scheme with the genetically mutated bunny rabbits. <laughs> pigs. It was genetically mutated pigs. <laughs> Anyway, so for years and years you're raising these genetically mutated pigs in the hope that one day you'll capture me, Hannibal, and feed me to those pigs. But you don't do it right away, even when you do capture me. No, Todd, you wait a really long, 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 long time until I have enough time to get a rescue. 
What kind of BS male complicated lame ass revenge scheme is that? Uh, I don't know. Let's try as Mason as a woman. So, you be Hannibal and I'll be Masonette, Berger. Okay. Uh, Clarice? You really pissed me off when you ate my face. And now I've captured you. Just right now. Just, just right now. Clarice? So, instead of like a kick, just imagine like a shot to the face. <coughs> so, I've heard that. Yeah. So, as you can see, <sighs> while the male Mason is prancing around trying to get pigs to sleep, <sighs> the female Mason has clearly gotten her revenge. <sighs> so, that's a novel Hannibal? <laughs> well, pretty much, but a little more brains eat being eaten. <sighs> <laughs> you are right there, buddy. Okay, so why don't we try some fast descriptions? I printed out a list of some books. I'm just going to call some of those out, and if you've read one of them, just give me a fast description, okay? Green eggs and ham. Oh, the best treatment of sexual experimentation in all of human history. The Divine Comedy by Dante. Oh, the first Mary Sue fan fiction. Okay, Hamlet. <clears throat> Hamlet's dad comes to him as a ghost and tells him to kill his uncle. So he goes on and kills his advisor, his mom, his girlfriend, and then finally his uncle and himself. The guy was a real go-getter, overachiever. He would have made a great quarterback. The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I'm Robert Louis Stevenson and I'm a latent homosexual.